2023 superhero movie season is coming to an end. It has not been good. It's just been flop after flop after embarrassment after embarrassment after, oh my God, I can't believe they made this non-stop. 2023 movie season in England, good on in history has been a good one because, you know, they kept trying to push a bunch of useless crap. The last movie that the MCU has in cinema for 2023 is the Marvels. That has been a colossal disaster. Let's take a look at the numbers for the Marvels here. Internationally, it has broken past 100 million. It's not 110 million. Domestically, it's at 78 million for a worldwide box office total of 188 million. This is not good, people. This is absolutely horrendous. I mean, when you go down, look at this drop off now. My God, look at that. This is the projector. It just dropped completely off. And when you go through the um, numbers, now because this, this is its third week in cinema, the Marvel's third week in cinema, it's gone substantially down. It's no longer even cracking a million. It's no longer cracking a million. It's at uh, it is at 339,495,336,299,000. I mean, look at it. Per, per theater, it's making, bringing in $98 per theater. It's at 3,070 theaters now. This is, this is just horrendous. There's no way else to put this. Nothing to even talk about how this could possibly find any kind of leverage anymore. Like I said, this movie will be lucky if it cracks 250 million. And that, that, is, that is really lucky if it does that. But right now, the Marvels is on course to lose something like $400 million for the MCU. So this is bad. This is really, really bad. But apparently, DC can do worse. Because information coming out now was that Aquaman 2 may be heading towards a worse box office crash than the Marvels. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is that more people were more um, talking about the Marvels than Aquaman 2. From the trailers of Aquaman 2 that you've seen, nothing really and I think with me, I was like, you know, you had Black Man there in the first movie, move on. We don't really need to see him again in the second one, but so desperately they need to do that. They put him in there, they're trying this whole brother bonding thing with Aquaman and Ocean Master. And figure that's going to somehow be what people want. They, they cut in Amber Heard from the movie. You know, like, she get it like a buffing, it's probably like less than 20 minutes in the movie. It's not, it's not looking good. It's really not looking good. Let's check out this article from Variety here. Christmas at the box office hinges on Aquaman 2. Movie theater owners are worried. Well, they probably should be worried. You probably should be worried. I'm um, talking about how Phoenix Theaters puts out, um, says it puts all its chips in one major tent pole and they try to gamble on this big holiday movie. In the, in the recent past, the Midwest-based chain has gone all in on 2022's Avatar The Way of Water. Now, I will say, Avatar The Way of Water was visually beautiful. I will say that absolutely stunning. The, all these shots underwater and stuff look really fantastic. But I said this before, I'll say it again. My opinion, the movie was just like the first one. Just with water. That was it. That doesn't mean that, you know, I, I didn't think the movie wasn't visually beautiful also, but I just find they're gonna go a different route. At 2021 Spider-Man No Way Home, well, yeah, that, that made money because people liked the movie. They even brought back the other Spider-Men, so they had that in there, all right. And 2019 Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. I feel sorry for all the people who wasted their time to watch that. 
But this holiday season is different. For the first time in more than a decade, excluding the pandemic stricken 2020, yeah, because they, they, they have to use the pandemic to, to, as a buffer for everything and say, you know, people still suffer from the pandemic, all kind of thing. I ain't saying no. People are still um, thinking with it and the other, but then you have movies like the Barbie. And if you let me know, you feel like Barbie, you know the Barbie, you feel like Barbie that literally made over a billion dollars. Where was the pandemic to blame for that? But still, there's no surefire blockbuster with the potential to gross one billion globally to cap off the year. You can't look at the release schedule between now and the end of the year and find one movie that stands out like Avatar's the big film. Says Phoenix Theatre owner Corey Jacobson. Okay. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom follows up 2018's mega hit Aquaman. Shouldn't be that big bet. Yet the sequel lands in theaters on December 22nd as a massive question mark. With the Jason Momoa led comic book adventure recapture the spark of the original or will it extend the string of DC flops? Like the Flash. Yes, go out and tell everybody the Flash is the greatest superhero movie ever which is being, which is starring a literal lunatic who have criminal charges against them and going around doing insane criminal things yeah when that will even if you even even if you disregard Ezra Miller's insanity the movie was terrible no 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 denying that you have Shazam Fury of the Gods more garbage and you have Blue Beetle more garbage what what were you expecting the overwhelming sense of superhero fatigue has even playing Disney's once bulletproof Marvel Cinematic Universe as evidenced by the misfires of the Marvels and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. The Marvels was, was crap, Ant-Man and the, and the Wasp Quantumania was nonsense. Now, this is, they, they want to use this line, the overwhelming sense of superhero fatigue, right? Because they want everybody to believe, you know, Blame it on superhero fatigue. Oh, people just tired of these superhero movies. People tired of superheroes on the whole. People tired of superheroes. If people tired of superheroes, explain this to me then. Because I, I'm having a hard time getting this. Because you have Ripperverse Alpha Core number one campaign has made over a million dollars. Its pre-order campaign goal was 300,000. It blew past that in its first day. And it has made over a million dollars. And it still have two months again to go in this campaign. And let us take a moment here to say congratulations to Eric July, the entire Ripperfuls team, Chuck Dixon, Joe Bennett, on working on Alpha Core and putting it out there. It is, it is once again another phenomenal hit. And with just three books, Isom number one, Isom number two, and Alpha Core, in Ripperverse has made over seven million dollars on just three books. You want to tell me superhero fatigue? No, people don't have superhero fatigue, or else they wouldn't be buying. They wouldn't be buying Alpha Core. They wouldn't be buying Isom. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be looking forward to what's coming next. From the Ripperverse, which will be Yaira, as if, uh, if I'm correct, yes, it'll be, it'll be Yaira, will be coming up next. No, people don't have superhero fatigue. People have garbage movie crap fatigue. That's what people have. Garbage movie crap fatigue. People are sick and tired of this nonsense. You put out movies like the Marvels, which makes no sense. In of itself, because the entire plot of the movie is just basically, basically a cheap ripoff of Spaceballs, and and yet even then it, it made no sense. Spaceballs literally a better movie than this. But no, but no, because because Aquaman two is set to is set to, to, to is set to literally perform worse than this sort of thing. We all pretty much knew what was going to happen. So let's go down and call it superhero fatigue. People don't have superhero fatigue. There's no such thing as superhero fatigue. People are just fed up of garbage being put out there. You got that with the MC. You go figure to yourself, you know what? You know what? They were smelling their own farts and figured out, figured, figured out, you know, their, you know, their excrement was better, better than anybody else. They could slap it on any piece of paper, throw it in any 
any movie theater and everybody would run to see it because they just have that name. And rather than, rather than DC have some degree of common sense and say, listen, let's do better. No, no, let's do worse and put out movies like The Flash, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, and Blue Beetle. And then also wanted to literally put out the Batgirl movie, which had absolutely nothing to do with Barbara Gordon, Batgirl. No, they just wanted to race swap her and expect it everybody to just love it because of that one thing. That is it. That is all that they wanted. That is all that they wanted and they get nothing else. The holiday season is on the shoulders of Aquaman. Well, that's going to sink. And that's not a good shoulder to put anything on here. Says Jeff Buck, an analyst with exhibitor relations. Can it cut through the negative DC noise? Well, the fact that, fact that all DC have going for them these days is negative noise. I, I don't think so. I really don't think so. For this holiday, for this year's holiday stretch, the gambles include Wonka. I don't think anybody cares about Wonka. Tim will damn Timothy Chalamet. I, I, I don't know. I, I figure you should just stick to Dune because I don't think anybody really cares about um, Wonka. Um, migration, the Iron Claw, and the musical adaptation, the Color Purple. Well, that's, mm, that's an interesting adaptation. That is very, very interesting. Yeah, they, they, they go on it with, uh, they go on to talk about some other stuff here and more than the other, but I mean, let, let me just be straight up here for a moment. Aquaman 2 was always going to be a, a difficult movie to sell anybody on because James Gunn is already out to reboot the entire DCU. And people are mostly wondering why waste their time and even go and watch these things when it is that it, it, it makes no sense. Because we've literally gotten confirmation from, um, from, from the writer on Man of Steel that, you know, DC had absolutely no, no plan going into this. They just wanted to catch up to the MCU and they fumbled the ball terribly. They didn't have a plan, they didn't have an idea, that they had nothing going in for it. And yes, we could talk about the Amber Heard mess and nonsense and all kinds of stuff. And yeah, that, that has not done anything good for the entire movie. Because people people do not like Amber Heard now, and most people are not going to watch the movie because of her. Some might, some might not, but that's it. But other than that, this movie really have nothing going for it to make anybody, you know, think they were talking about that whole stuff involving or they wanted to, you know, off the Aqua Baby. Yes, it happened in the comics where the Aqua Baby was, was, was a little older and, you know, things were going to happen. If they, if, they, if they decide to do it, well, then that will be a kind of shock factor in the movie. But overall, I just don't see this movie having much appeal to really draw in anybody. And I think that, you know, this is pretty much it for the 2023 box office movie season. It ain't doing good. We see where the Marvels is at in the um, numbers here. Has, worldwide has not even cracked 200 million yet. Domestic, it's not going to pass 100 million. You know, and you already have Aquaman 2 heading towards our worst box office crash than the Marvels. So this is pretty much it. That's pretty much it. And it's not looking good. They were expecting Aquaman to, 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 um, to make something and it's already looking to fall short of the mouthful. So that's it pretty much, you know. In 2023, movie season is done. The Marvels full up that it looks like Aquaman is going to drown at the box office. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. If you have a different opinion, I'd love to hear it. If you like the video, you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Bring the notification bell and we'll every time I put out a new video. And I shall see you all next time. Take care.